Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will give you a little introduction into ExoPlayer using Jetpack Compose. So ExoPlayer is a library by Google that just makes media playback in Android a lot easier. So with media playback I mean audio and video. <laughs> um, I already have a Spotify clone playlist on my channel which is a bit older but there I also used ExoPlayer to actually play music files in the background. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can create a simple video player, as you can see here. It's not a very beautiful app, it's a very functional one. So we can uh, just open a file here, clicking this little button. And then on this emulator, I only have one video, but I will show you how we can create a little playlist of videos. We can open this. And there you go, you can see here the file name is added to um, a list here. So that's actually a list. We can then select videos to play these. And when they are actually over, um, they will also play here in the video player. So we can then hit play. And then yeah, we just see the video. And if we would have more videos than this one, then we could also add these to the list. We can probably also add the same one multiple times. Yes, you can see. So it's effectively a list. We can then uh, select this video and then also play it. And this will actually be a lot less work than it looks like because ExoPlayer already comes with a lot of important functionality like this video playback here. For example, um, yeah, just switching to the next video, hitting play, pause and all that stuff. That's already implemented within ExoPlayer. We can override this behavior and kind of implement our own custom player but that's not in, a, in the scope of this video so we're just going to build a very basic video player here and usually you're fine with these controls I mean it looks quite good I assume that you already have the initial project in your Android studio so that just contains the dependencies we need let's go through them here very quickly on the one hand we have the media 3 dependencies media 3 is a rather new library from Google that just makes media stuff in Android easier and they also included ExoPlayer and the UI in that, yeah, which is just the, the player view we're going to use here to play the video. And we're going to use Dagger Hill for dependency injection. Uh, there's just a little bit of stuff we want to inject and some dependencies we have to manage. And I just noticed that there are two dependencies missing, which I'll paste here, which is on the one hand the extended icon set of um, material design and the view model dependency. So we can use view models with JPEG Compose. Cool, let's hit synchronize now. You can find the link for this down in this video's description to simply clone this into your Android Studio or just download the zip. Here you can see I added some plugins that we will need. Actually, personalize is not needed, uh, but yeah. And here this class path for Dagger Hilt. So what will be the first thing we implement here? The first thing will be our view model in the end, which just manages the basic player functionality. So if we select a track that we can also, or rather if we select a video, then uh, that we also play this and all the parsing and uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. Let's go to our root package and create a new class called, yeah, main view model. We're just going to have a very simple single screen here, which is just in our main activity. And that will, be linked to the main view model. Yes, let me add that to Git. And let's make that inherit from view model. Add the Hilt view model annotation so we are able to inject dependencies in this view model. And add an inject constructor here where we import inject. And now, first of all, there are two things we need in this main view model. On the one hand, we want an instance of saved state handle. In case you don't know what safe state handle is, that is basically something uh, that is used or that contains a bundle on, and uh, like a map of arguments and of uh, variables and fields that survives process death. So process death in Android is just something when the Android system decides to kill your app because it needs memory, then that is effectively called process death. But if the user goes back to your app using their recent apps tab, while or when your app was actually killed before, then the last screen will be restored after process death, but your state will actually be lost. And with safe state handle, we can make sure to restore this state and actually not result in any weird application states. For example, that our um, video list would be empty in that case. So let's think about which states we actually want to have in you know, our view model. The whole application state or the screen state is actually very simple because all we really want to save is our list of URIs. So we can say we have a private val video URIs and we now get that state, uh, state flow, which we'll use here from safe state handle, get state flow. We need to specify a key, which we can say is, uh, yeah, video URIs. And we need to specify an initial value, which is just an empty list of URIs. So 
we're just going to be able to select a video as you just saw. And that will be like the URI, the path of that will be saved in this video URI state. However, when we speak of ExoPlayer, there are so-called media items, which we need to pass to ExoPlayer. So ExoPlayer is able to play these media items. And a media item could be coming from a URI. It could be coming from uh, some kind of other web URL or so. So you stream it. Um, so there are multiple sources where such a media item comes from. That's why they have such an, such an item. And we also want to have these media items as a state of course here, but since we can save these in save state handle, since they're not a partial level or so, we need to make these a separate state and kind of um, always recalculate them when our video URI state actually changes. So maybe that was a little bit unclear, don't worry. Um, let me just write this here and then I will explain it again. First of all, I want to go to our root package and create a video item data class, which just represents yeah, one item. It contains the actual URI. Let's call it content URI because we only deal with content URIs. Um, so URI, we will have the so-called media item, which comes here from ExoPlayer or rather from the media three library. And we're going to have a name because we will actually also load the file name of the chosen video. And we also want to display that in the UI, of course. So those are three values that we actually want to have in our state. But since we can't save this media item in uh, save state handle, we need to make that a separate state and not save this in save state handle. However, we still want this to be uh, to, to survive process death. So what we need to do is we need to make this dependent on this video URI state, which comes from save state handle, because if we have a list of URIs, we can always easily transform that into a list of media items. And that's what we will do. And that's of course what we can also do after process death happens. So we will have a val video items state here, which is video URIs dot map. So whenever video URIs changes, we actually get these URIs here as a state. And we can now map these to a list of video items. So we can say we map this URI list emission to another list. And we kind of want to use another map operator, which now refers to the list instead of to the state flow. And here we get access to the current URI, which we can then map to a video item where the content URI is just URI. The media item is media item dot from URI, where we pass our URI. And the name, let's just keep this um, at no name for now, because parsing the name from a content URI is a bit difficult and we will do this later in this video. But right now we just mapped our plain URIs list to a list of video items that contains these URIs and the corresponding media item here. Right now that wouldn't do anything because the flow is not launched that we uh, created with map. Instead, we need to call dot state in afterwards to just yeah create a state float of that. So that the last value of this video items um, emission here is saved. Let's pass 5,000 here for um, uh, sharing started while subscribed. That just means that this map block will only execute if there are actually subscribers. And this is just for how long it will keep executing this code after the last subscriber disappeared. And the initial value is just an empty list again. So now we effectively derived this state out of uh, the state that we actually save in save state handle. So our media items will also effectively survive process death here. And in general, this whole process death thing is just something I want to spread more awareness about because it can really lead to weird application states. And most people, especially beginners, don't consider this or don't even know that this thing exists. And I also noticed that in my mentorship program, which I recently launched the first round of, that a lot of people there where I just reviewed their code didn't consider this and didn't even know that this exists. But this can really lead to, to bugs and all that stuff. Yeah, so I just want to spread some awareness here. By the way, if you are looking for some kind of mentorship in Android, then uh, that is definitely something for you. And uh, yeah, check the first link in this video's description. You can apply there, you will find all the infos there. And if you have any questions, then yeah, just ask in the comments or on Instagram or so, because I am actually soon launching the second round of this and there are only yeah, a few spots available. So if you are committed and you want to become the best version of yourself as an Android developer, then consider checking that link out and apply. The next thing is we want to have an init block here in which we call the player.prepare function. And it seems like I haven't injected the player yet. Let's do this here in our constructor. We want to have a public 
player variable here from media3 and the this player comes from media3 as I said and just contains all the functionality that we need to actually change our video playback. So for example, to pause the video, to play the next video, to set a specific list of media items we want to play, we want to set as a playlist and all that stuff. So yeah, that is just what we need to do or what we need to call before we want to be able to play videos or music. Then next, we want to have a function to actually add a video item or rather a video URI. So when we actually open our, our file browser to select a video, after the user then selected that, we want to call this function to add our video to our URIs list and also display that in our UI afterwards. So here we're going to have a URI and what we're going to do is we're going to say our save state handle at the, um, we're using the key video URIs is now video URIs dot value plus our new URI. So we just concatenate these two um, or the list with our new URI. And then we say player dot add media item. And here we just construct a media item out of our URI, which we also just pass here. And that's it. That's how we add a new item to our playlist of our exo player. The next function we need here is to actually play a specific video. So when we click on a video in our playlist, then we of course want to play this in our player so we can have a function play video where we just pass a URI we want to play and then what we will do here is we will say player dot set media item so that will just yeah set the the current media item of our player to play it and here we want to find the the proper value for that media item in our URIs list so we will say video items value dot find and we want to find the media item that has the content URI of the URI we passed here and we want to refer to the media item of that. If that's null, we just return and ignore this. And down here, the last function we need is on cleared. So when the view model is cleared, when the yeah, when it's popped from the back stack or so, then we just want to call player.release. So we just release all the resources this player instance used. So one more thing we actually need in this class is that we need to be able to parse names of content URIs. So content URI isn't just a URI we can easily read in like a file. No, we actually need the so-called content resolver to read that. And especially if we want to have um, access to specific metadata of such a file that is behind a content URI, then we need to also use the content resolver to actually yeah, kind of um, make a query what kind of information we want to read from this file. And since that would be out of the scope of the um, responsibilities of this view model, I want to make a separate class for that, which just has the responsibility of fetching uh, metadata from a uh, content URI. So let's go here to a root package, create a little file called metadata reader probably, or yeah, let's call it like that, metadata reader. I want to put this behind an abstraction and all this will contain is a function get content from URI or let's rather call it get metadata from URI. We pass the URI and we can make it explicit, uh, yeah, explicit to make that this is a content URI like this and it returns a metadata object which we will create here. Let's just create this here in this file metadata and all our metadata here consists of is just a file name uh, but I, I still like to create this data class for the sake of readability and that it makes it easy to extend this because it's very likely that um, you will want to fetch more metadata of a video, maybe the date it was added or so. Um, so you, with this approach, you just have it very easy to add more fields that you want to read here. Let's go down here and create an implementation of this metadata reader like this. And this will actually take the application as an instance, so private val app. So we just need the application context for this since the content resolver we will need in this class will need that. And it will implement our metadata reader interface. And in here we can then override or implement this get metadata from URI function in which we actually want to also be able to pass a nullable metadata here because if that is not a content URI we pass, for example, if it's a file or resource URI, then uh, this approach doesn't work. 
So content URI actually comes from the user selecting content in some kind of file browser or so. Let's also add this nullability thing here. So if that's not the case, I want to add a check here. If the content URI dot scheme is not content, we return null here. So now how do we get the file name of the file behind that content URI? As I said, we want to use the content resolver for that, which we get using a replication context like this. And then we call a function called query. So effectively, all these media files are just saved in a big database, at least the, the metadata about that, for example, the file name. And we can query these entries using this query function. So first of all, the URI we want to read here is obviously our content URI. The projection is used to only um, filter for specific fields. So that is um, in SQL, that would be what comes after select. Here in this case, we only are interested in the file name field. So we don't need to query for all the other fields that exist. So we can say we pass an array off here and we want to pass media store a dot video a dot media or no, actually dot video columns dot display name that is the actual file name of that URI and then we only get that in the result and for the rest here we can actually pass now so we have selections selection arcs that would be the where clause in an SQL query and we have a sort order we are not interested in any sorting so we can actually use it as it is here and then add question mark dot use which effectively now gives us a so-called cursor and with a cursor we can fetch the single fields that are contained in the result of this query. So here you can see we get this cursor and we now need to get a so-called column index. Let's just call it index of that column we want to read. So cursor get column index and we want the column index of our display name column. So we again say media store video video columns display name we then say cursor dot move to first to just move to the first entry of our result. So if you would have, let's say 10 rows that result here, then like that result out of this query, then move to first would just move to the first row of that result. And this index refers to the display name column of that row. And since we know that we only have one result here, we can simply say cursor get string because the display name is a string. And here we pass our index. And that effectively now um, yeah, contains our first name, uh, our, our file name, of course, which is now saved here in the file name. So after that, we can say return. Oops, we can do this and we can say return a file name question mark let to just make sure we check for nullability here the file name is here let's call it full name because this contains the full path of our file and we only want the actual name so abc dot um, yeah mp4 or so and we want to wrap this around a metadata object so we can say the file name is yuri dot parse oops using our full name let's rename this i don't like full name uh, because this is not really a, a real name full file name or so and then we say we refer to the last path segment, which just contains the actual file. So abc.mp4, for example. If that does not exist, we return null in this function. And yeah, that's how we effectively read a file name from a content URI. A lot of code. Welcome to Android. But let's go to our main view model. Make sure we have an instance of our metadata reader here. This one. Scroll down to our video items. And here where the name is, we say metadata reader dot get metadata from URI. The content URI is just URI and we refer to the file name. And if that's not, we just say no name. And that's now it for the underlying video and file functionality. Now the remaining part consists of creating our UI layout and of actually yeah, setting up Dagger Hilt to be able to actually inject these dependencies here. So let's go to main activity. And in here, we're going to put our UI code. First of all, let's get some references to our states. So the view model is equal to Hilt view model, and we need to specify the type. We then want our video item state by view model video items collect as state. So we convert that to a compose state, and compose will actually be triggered when this state flow updates. We now also want an activity launcher that fires when we want to select the video file. 
which is a select video launcher. That's how I will call it. And we can construct that using remember launcher for activity result. And we need to define a contract. So basically what we want to do with this activity launcher. So we now launch a new activity for a specific result. The new activity would be our file browser and the result would be the chosen video. So here we can say activity result contracts dot get content because we want to get content here with this launcher. On result will be a Lambda function that gives us the URI the user actually picked out of this launcher or out of this um, activity that was opened. And here we just want to say URI.let. And in that case, if that's not null, if that URI exists, we call add video URI in our review model. Cool. And for our UI, if we take a look here, then all that really is is a big column that contains our player view. That's how the view is called. That comes from Media3. That is an XML view. There is no composed version of this available yet, but we're going to use the migration Android view composable to convert this view into a composed view. Then after that, we just have a little icon button to select a file. And then we have a lazy column for all of our chosen video files. So in here, we're going to have a column where we pass a modifier of modifier, oops, fill max size. We can add a bit of padding, let's say 16 dp import dp and then we're going to put an android view composable in here for our player view in this factory block we get a reference to the context and we need to create our player view using that context so we say player view and pass our context and this player view contains a so-called player so we can say it that player and you can see that is null by default or that's at least nullable and that's the player we need to assign to this player view because we of course need to link this player we use in our view model to control our video playback with our player view. So we can say it that player, oops, come on, it that player is equal to view model that player to just contain that connection. Then we also want to add a modifier. Modifier is modifier dot fill max width. And I want to give this an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. So 16 divided by 9f. To achieve that, of course, you can make this dependent on the screen size as well. It's actually a great homework to also make this um, look nice in landscape mode, which it currently doesn't. So then you would need to adjust this aspect ratio and just adjust this whole layout a little bit. But I will leave that up to you. This is more about the functionality of ExoPlayer here. Below our video player, I want to have a bit of spacing. So we say uh, spacer height ATP. We can then add an icon button. When we click on this icon button, we want to launch our select video launcher. So we want to open the activity to select a video file. And here this input is just the MIME type of the, fi of the files we want to be able to select. So here we can say, hey, we only want video files in this launcher to appear. And that's what we want. So we can say video slash MP4 to only show MP4 files. Of course, um, actual player supports more file types of media files or video files. I don't currently have a list in front of me, but you can also probably do this to select all kinds of video files. I will leave it at MP4 and feel free to explore. And we actually don't need anything else. So here we just launch our activity for a result that shows MP4 videos to be selected. And when a video is selected, this on result callback will be fired with the URI of that file. And we just add it to our state in the view model. The icon of that icon button will be icons default file open. I think that's what I used. And the content description will be select video. And let's format that a bit. Let's add one more spacer here of height 16dp. And we add our lazy column. Lazy column. Let's add a modifier as usual that we just occupy the whole width of our screen. And in here, we're going to list all of our video items coming from the view model. So we have an items block, import this um, block with uh, that, that says list of type T. And then we say we pass our video items here, we get a reference to each item. And that's effectively just a text. Where the text is the file name, so item dot name, then the modifier is modifier fill max width we want to make this text clickable 
So when we click on such an item, we want to play the video. So we model play video passing item dot content URI. And we want to add some padding to make this a bit larger, this button of 16 dp. Cool. That's it, at least for the visual part of our UI. There is one more thing we need to consider here. If we take a look at our player view, then you will notice that there are functions on pause and on resume, which will tell the player view when the activity actually goes in the background to just save some resources to not unnecessarily play the video, because that's, of course, not what we want when the app is in the background. Normally, in an XML project, we would just have a reference to this player view and then we could override on resume and on pause to call these functions there. But here in Compose, that's a bit different because we don't have a reference to this player view outside of this Android view composable. And we also don't want to save a reference there. So we somehow need to, to have it as a state when our activity is actually in the proper lifecycle states to be able to still call these functions on this player view. And the way we can do this is we can make a lifecycle state and that's a little bit hacky now, but it is how we need to do it with Compose. And that is mutable state of lifecycle dot event on create by default. And we then simply change this to the current um, lifecycle event that fires. So when the activity goes to on resume, we change this to on resume. When it then goes to um, on pause, for example, we change it to on pause and all that stuff. So we can actually get these references using a disposable effect. And here we need the lifecycle owner of this activity, local lifecycle owner dot current. We pass this as a key. So whenever the lifecycle owner changes, we re-execute this effect block. And here we can define a callback. So val um, callback over observer is object lifecycle event observer. And we can use that to get references to all these lifecycle events. So in on state changed, we simply say our life cycles, um, life cycle state is event. And we can also convert that to a Lambda like this. Um, let's remove source and put this on a separate line. Yeah, just like this. So we have a life cycle event observer. This will be called for every single life cycle event. And we just put the event in a state afterwards. We still get an error here because we, on the one hand, need to add this observer to our life cycle owner. So life cycle owner, life cycle add observer, passing the observer. And then we need to finish off this uh, disposable effect block with an on dispose block, which is called when this screen actually leaves the composition or so when it is kind of destroyed. And here we want to say we remove the callback again. So lifecycle owner, lifecycle, remove observer, passing the observer. Cool. Now we have the current lifecycle as a state here, which you can use in our Android view in the so-called update block. So here we say update, which is now called whenever a state changes, a composed state that is used in this Lambda expression. So, whoops, what we can do is when our life cycle is actually life cycle event on pause. So when on pause is reached, then we want to say it, so a player view dot on pause and it dot player dot pause. So we just uh, pause the, the video playback. And if then life cycle event on resume is called, then we want to call it dot on resume and else just nothing. So that is a bit of effort to make this properly work, but it is uh, the only real way using Jetpack Compose. And you also, I don't think you should save this reference here somewhere outside of this Android view. I'm not sure if this can cause any leaks or so, or um, that this can mess up your recompositions and whatever. I would probably not do it. With this approach, it's definitely safer. And in future, we can probably also expect a composed version of this player view since ExoPlayer is a library from Google. Google strongly pushes Compose, so we should be good here. But maybe you also just learned how you can use uh, an, an XML view in a Compose project with this Android view. Anyways, let's set up the last thing that's missing here, and that is dependency injection using Dagger Hilt. So right now it would crash because Dagger Hilt could not construct this view model here. We can simply do this 
using the Android Entry Point Composable uh, uh, annotation, of course, which just allows us to inject dependencies in an activity in an Android component, which yeah we have here using Deckard Hilt. We then want to set up an application class. So Dagger Hill knows our application and is also able to um, inject that here in our dependencies, such as this reader. So we can say video player app, make that a class that uh, extends application and we annotate that with Hilt Android app. We then go to our manifest, add this class here as a name like this. And the last thing we need to do is we need to create a so-called app module or a view model module rather, just to find the dependencies we want to be able to inject in our view model. So let's call this um, view model module or app. Yeah, let's do view model module or video player module. Make that an object. We say we um, that this is a module from Dagger. And we say we install this in this so-called view model component, which just tells Dagger, hey, these dependencies we declare in this module live as long as a specific view model, because we only need this player in our main view model, so we don't need to make this a singleton. So in here, we say we have a provides function, so we provide a dependency that is scoped to our view model, and we call this, let's say, provides video player, requires our application context, and returns a player instance. And in here we now construct that video player using exoplayer. So exoplayer.builder passing our application context. And here we could now configure quite a lot of stuff if we were to build a much more complex video playing app, but we just want to call build and leave it at the default configuration. We also want to be able to provide such a metadata reader here. So we can copy this function, paste it here, provide metadata reader, put that here, and we return a metadata reader implementation, passing our application context. And that should be everything. I would say we launch this on our device. And hopefully everything works as expected. There we go. It at least looks like as it should. Let's try to open a video. Select my video here, it adds this to our list and we can hopefully play this. Yes, that is working perfectly fine. Also, if we rotate, then it will look ugly, but it should keep playing the video. Yes, it does. And back. Yeah, so you can see it's the, the state is not lost on a configuration change because we didn't initialize our player in our activity. And we can then also add multiple files, which we can then play here. You can see then it starts at zero again. If we play this and we select the first one, then again, yeah, it just starts playing. And also if a video is um, weird because it just jumped to this um, last timestamp, I think that's just because these content duties are the same because I just added the same video twice. And here in our view model, we use that URI kind of as an ID. So that's probably why it just jumped to uh, yeah, 21st second or so. Um, I, I tried this quite often with uh, different videos, but I just don't have these here in, on this emulator. So that should work just fine. Um, and also if we, if we select this first video and we kind of seek forward, then it should go on to the next video because we added that on um, as a playlist. Yeah, you can see, we can play the next one here. Here we can also choose the playback speed and audio, which just comes from ExoPlayer by default. So it's quite cool, that library. In case you like this video, then uh, please leave a subscribe. Check out the video description if you are interested in being personally mentored by me and just becoming a job ready Android developer. You can apply there and find all the other information. Apart from that, thanks for watching. I'll see you back in the next video. Enjoy your week. Bye bye.